PH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and this is 10 Cards You Should Be Putting in Your Commander Decks. Episode 4, I made a video recently, you may have seen it, talking about how I will not be buying any more Magic cards and what I should have specifically said in that video, although I did title the video this, I'm not buying any new Magic cards. Now, am I actually going to stop buying new Magic cards? I'm still on the fence about it. I'm definitely going to take some time off, though, I think. However, what I am definitely going to continue to be doing is buying old Magic cards. I love finding these old gems that are great fits in my decks. Of course, that's what this series is all about. For example, I recently put a Ghost Town in my Bralin deck. Pretty funny fit there, I think. I'm not even sure what made me think of this. Of course, I remember this card from way back in the day, thinking it was such a funny card. Just a colorless land, but you can pay zero to return it to your hand. Activate only if it's not your turn. And why did I put it in my Bralin deck? Because that's a discard theme, and I thought it would be funny to later in the game, pay zero, return it to my hand, so that I can use it as discard fodder. Love making discoveries like that and hopefully in this video you guys will make some discoveries as well with the cards I'm mentioning that might fit in your decks. I got some really unique interesting ones here like my first suggestion, Brand of Ill Omen. This is a very, very unique card. Three and a red enchantment aura enchant creature. Has cumulative upkeep a red mana. And I know Cumulative Upkeep always scares people away. I will be mentioning probably a lot of cards with Cumulative Upkeep in these videos. So I will preface with this. It's not that bad. First of all, when you cast this, you aren't going to have to pay the upkeep until, of course, your next turn, right? So you're going to get the effect off the card before you ever have to pay any more mana. Then I only got to pay the one red mana and then a whole nother turn cycle and I got to pay two. That's not so bad, I don't think. And usually when you see cumulative upkeep on a card, the reason why it's there is because you're getting a really powerful effect. And this one is a doozy. Enchanted Creatures Controller can't cast creature spells. So of course, this is an aura that you're going to be casting on your opponent's creatures, right? You're going to choose an opponent, likely one who's playing a very creature heavy deck, and you're going to stick this on one of their creatures. And now they can't cast creature spells. That's pretty good, right? As long as you can keep this around, they're not going to be able to cast creature spells. Really neat, interesting, unique card. Kind of doing that Staxy thing-ish. I mean, I hate to use that word so incorrectly, but people will think of it that way. And it's doing it in mono red, which you don't see very often. Another very interesting enchantment, Breast Stealer's Crypt, two black and a blue enchantment. If a player would draw a card, instead they draw a card and reveal it. If it's a creature card, that player discards it unless they pay three life. And again, very powerful effect in a commander game. Every player is going to be revealing the cards they draw and not just on their draw step, if they would draw a card, they instead draw it and reveal it so everyone gets to see. Now, where do you want to play this? And I'm playing into the colors a little bit here. We're in a Demir deck, obviously, because it's a blue and black card. I think it's a great include in three different kinds of decks. Number one, I'm just not playing creatures, right? So I play this because I don't really have any creatures in my deck and my opponents now are going to have to discard all their creatures unless they want to pay three life. Number two. I'm in a deck where I want creatures in my graveyard. This is such an easy way to just chuck creatures in your graveyard, right? Because of course, when you reveal a creature card, hey, you put it in your graveyard, which is exactly where you want it, in a discard theme, because this is actually a discard. So I can reveal a creature off the top and then throw it in the bin and I get a free discard trigger. That might be another neat fit for this card. A very powerful effect on an enchantment. Funny enough, also hating on creatures as well, but in completely different colors. Let's talk about Boring 100,000 Arrows, one of the most uniquely named cards in the Commander format. Two and a blue sorcery, draw a card for each tap creature target opponent controls. Now, this isn't a completely unknown card. I'm sure people have seen it around. It does see play. It has been reprinted in Commander sets. The reason I'm mentioning it in this video is because this is one of those cards that looks like it fits a particular theme and I think can be played outside of that. I have this in my Abishon deck because of course in that deck I'm tapping creatures down all the time so I can draw a card for each tap creature target opponent controls which can be pretty darn good but of course your opponent's creatures are being tapped all the time in every game anyway so even though there is a stipulation here it's not much of a stipulation right? How many cards do you have to get off this to make it a decent draw spell. Three, I think most people would agree, 
makes this a really good draw spell. If this was three mana, draw three cards of sorcery speed, everyone would probably be putting it in their decks. So all you have to do is wait for any of your opponents to have three tap creatures, and this becomes three mana, draw three. That's pretty darn good. And of course, the sky's the limit from there. Maybe they got 10 tap creatures, and you could draw 10 cards off of this, right? So for me, this is a card that it is worth it to put in any deck as a draw spell because yes, it might sit in my hand for a little bit, but it might be worth it to wait that long because I could end up drawing a ton of cards off of it. Speaking of card draw, I have a very unique one here that I got knocked on pretty good the first time I mentioned it in this series. Book of Wrath, six mana artifact, pay two and pay two life to draw a card. Of course, people in the comments will say that phrase that I dislike so much, eight mana to draw a card, that's terrible. But of course, Eight mana draws you the first card, and then the second, third, fourth, and fifth, and so on are only going to cost you two mana. Also the two life. Now, why I'm mentioning this card, yes, it's not a great draw option, I know. And especially since the last time I mentioned this card, we've got so many better draw options. The first time I mentioned this, it's just like, okay, you're in that color that doesn't draw cards very well. This seems like a decent draw option. Most colors don't really need this anymore. However, the reason I'm mentioning it here is because this actually has a very unique effect. And I like to mention the cards with very unique effects. This is repeatable draw, guys. How many cards do this? How many cards, if you have infinite mana, can just draw and draw and draw and draw, right? Not a lot. There are those X spells, of course, but usually those are only in blue. Outside of that, you might not have any way to do that. Now, you do have to pay the two life. That obviously will limit you from drawing your entire deck, but this is actually a unique effect. How many cards out there are just going to sit on the battlefield and you just dump mana into them and they draw you as many cards as you want? Not too many. So this card could find a home in some pretty unique situations. Coming in at number five, Bosium Strip. Another very unique card three mana artifact pay three and tap until end of turn you may cast instant and sorcery spells from the top of your graveyard if a spell cast this way would be put into a graveyard exile instead and of course i will also be mentioning cards on this series that reference the order of your graveyard i actually already did one last time that used to matter in the game of magic not so much anymore however if you are playing cards like this your graveyard actually does matter and so you have to be careful when you're putting stuff into your graveyard. Now, I'll just say this isn't super great, obviously. It's essentially giving the instants and sorceries in your graveyard a flashback. Obviously, this was flashback before flashback existed. It's only working on your instance of sorceries. That's fine. This, though, is a way to, I mean, giving flashback to your stuff in your graveyard. Obviously, not every color can do that. But also, it is a way to cast things from somewhere other than your hand, which is why I'm giving it a mention here, right? There's a lot of commanders out there that are now doing the if you cast it from anywhere other than your hand scenario. And of course, this is casting from somewhere other than your hand. So if you're having trouble finding enough stuff to fit in that deck or just a unique card that will work in that strategy, this is certainly one. Let's talk about Brawl coming in at number six. This is a really funny card. Three red, red instant. Until end of turn, all creatures gain. Tap, this creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature. If you wanna see some fun in a commander game, you throw this guy out there. It's instant speed too, which can be really, really important. I will say this is kind of almost a mono red board wipe or could. It also creates a lot of effects that might be good in a deck that you are playing. So first of all, this is going to make your opponents tap down all their creatures, right? And if you want to be doing that, fantastic. When this resolve, what ends up happening is now every creature in play has this tap ability. Tap to deal damage equal to power target creature, right? Essentially a punching effect. You will have to be careful though when you cast it, right? Turn order is really, really important with this card. If you cast it on your turn, of course, it's your turn so you have priority so you get to go first. Of course, then everyone else gets to respond. So if I punch a bunch of my opponent's creatures, they can respond by punching mine. So it's not like I'm going to get out of the woods here. Obviously, if you're in that deck where you want your creatures to be dealt damage, hey, now this is a great way to get around the downside, right? It also, obviously, if you're not playing any creatures at all, just causes your opponents to kill each other's creatures, right? It's a really fun interaction. And again, the turn order can really matter here because of course, each person is going to react in turn order after their creatures are imbued with this ability. There's just a lot of really neat outcomes and 
I think a lot of decks that might be able to use a card like this. Really interesting. In a similar theme, Breaking Wave. Two blue blue sorcery. It's kind of funny that these two cards, Brawl and Breaking Wave, sort of work together a little bit. So, you may cast Breaking Wave as though it had flash if you pay two more to cast it. So you can cast this at instant speed, for six mana, and you might want to, maybe, maybe not. However, again, this has a incredibly unique effect, and I gotta mention cards like that on this series. Simultaneously, there's a word you don't see on magic cards very often, untap all tapped creatures and tap all untapped creatures. This is just a very unique card, obviously. Again, another card that I have in my Abishon deck because I'm in that theme. But if you're doing a tapping or untapping theme, either or, right? Whether you wanna be tapping down creatures or you want to be untapping creatures, both of those scenarios work with this card, right? And I'm sure there's a lot of decks out there that are doing that. I like the combo with False Floor. It's not much of a combo, but it's a kind of a neat combo where you have your False Floor in play. Of course, creatures enter the battlefield tapped when your False Floor is in play. But of course, it exiles untapped creatures with your Breaking Wave. You can swap where my creatures, of course, on my turn will untap. Then I cast the Breaking Wave, tapping all my creatures, untapping my opponents use the false floor to exile all my opponent's creatures. Kind of a goofy combo there. It is a very unique card though, so I had to give it a mention. Let's talk about Bounty of the Hunt, a card that, you know, if you've been playing Magic for a long time, famously is a really bad card. However, I will make a case for it. So, three green green instant. You may exile a green card from your hand rather than pay this spell's mana cost. And of course, we've all seen that phrase before. And yes, indeed, this was in a cycle of cards that came out in alliances with Force of Will. And and I think Blue probably got the best of that cycle there. Force of Will, of course, one of the best counter spells ever printed. So Blue made out pretty good there. Green, not so much, because you get to distribute three plus one plus one counters among one, two, or three target creatures. I mean, that's okay, right? You could do that for free. However, it gets worse. For each plus one plus one counter you put on a creature this way, remove a plus one plus one counter from that creature at the beginning of the next cleanup step so you don't even get them permanently. You have to remove them. Oof. Now, I will say, obviously, you will probably almost guaranteed not pay the five mana for this. It will be just like a Force of Will. Again, Force of Will is a terrible counter spell if you don't cast it for free. Five mana counter spell is awful. Same with the effect here, right? Don't look at this and go, oh, five mana for that effect is terrible because you're never going to do that. You're going to cast it for free. Now, I know people will say, why the hell would I ever use this because I'm putting the counters on only for a turn and then removing them. I think there are uses for that, okay? There's a lot of commanders. In fact, over 200 I counted that are dealing with counters. So obviously there's a lot of decks this will fit. Some commanders just care about you having counters on stuff. And I will give one example. I'm trying to make a case for this card. I'll give one example where I think it might actually be a neat fit. Kyler, Sigardian Emissary, a very popular Selesnia commander in the format. Says on it, other humans you control get plus one, plus one for each counter on Kylar. So I imagine, you know, you're doing human tribal here, you're putting lots of humans in play, and you want lots of counters on your commander so that you can give your team that big anthem. So with Bounty of the Hunt, what this becomes is for free, I put three counters on my commander temporarily. So what this turns into, I know it doesn't seem great, but what this essentially becomes is for free, my whole team gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. That seems seems okay. <laughs> Again, it's not great, but it is a very unique inclusion in a deck where you want to be putting counters on your creatures. And again, you're likely going to be doing it for free. I'm going to end off with a couple of cards, ironically enough, that aren't very old. Funny enough, they're from Modern Horizons 2, which of course was a great commander set, but there's a couple of cards here that I don't think get enough love in the format. Break Ties is one I've mentioned a few times that, man, I just think this is a fantastic card and it doesn't really see a lot of play. Two in a white instant, choose one. Destroy target artifact or destroy target enchantment or exile target card from a graveyard. And it also has reinforce one, pay one white. So if you're 
you're not familiar with the reinforce ability, it means you pay the one white, discard this card to put a counter on a creature. So because this is doing so much, I mean, this essentially has four modes. That's a lot. And of course, all of them you want to be doing in a commander game. Destroying artifacts and enchantments, that's an obvious one. Exiling a card from a graveyard at instant speed, that could be a game saver, obviously. But also, it puts a counter on a creature, which if you're in a white deck that's doing counters, this might be a great fit. This is the kind of card that for me, okay, I got to put removal in my deck anyway. I got to put graveyard hate in my deck anyway. I'm playing a plus one, plus one counter theme in white. Why don't I throw this guy in there? Because I can also use it to put counters on my creatures. Very underrated card in the commander format, I think. I also think that Break the Ice is a card that might start getting a little bit more play in the commander format. This card got a little bit of buzz when it came out in Modern Horizons 2 and sort of vanished. I think I have seen it played once in a game, but doesn't really see much play. And of course, the reason why is because people don't really like land destruction in the commander format, although I would argue it is necessary. So black and a black sorcery, destroy target land that is snow or could produce colorless mana, which that's not bad at all. Destroy target land is absolutely something that every commander deck needs in my opinion. However, it has overload for black black, which of course means if you cast it for its overload cost, we'll read destroy each land that is snow or could produce colorless mana. So of course you're not gonna put this in your deck if you are playing snow lands. You might put it in your deck if you're playing colorless lands, maybe. You know, if you happen to lose a land, I don't think it's so bad. Obviously you're looking to hurt your opponents more. I think people shy away from this card because it can be. I mean, if a guy's playing all snow lands, it's a blowout. You're destroying all his lands. A lot of people frown upon that. I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I'm pretty okay with land destruction in the commander format. You can go watch my video where I talk about it. And cards like this are becoming more necessary in the commander format because we just have so many fantastic lands that are producing colorless mana. Or in the case of snow covered wastes, which also just came out in Modern Horizons 3 are both snow and producing colorless mana, funny enough. Cards like this are becoming more necessary, right? If you feel bad about destroying some guy's snow lands, because that's what he happens to be playing in his deck, just don't cast the overload part, right? You don't have to. You can just use this to destroy that one powerful land that your opponent has in play that happens to be producing colorless mana, right? I mean, you could also destroy your opponent's dark depths. There's a snow land that this can be used before they get their merit lage. There's a lot of ways to use this card. It's actually pretty good, and you can use it as a blowout as well if you want to, right? So if you're the kind of guy that you feel bad for destroying a whole bunch of your opponent's lands, just don't use the overload. You can use the first effect. I think this is a pretty good card in a commander game. All right, that is it. That is all. 10 more cards that I think you guys should be playing in your commander decks. Suggestions that might specifically fit in the deck you are already playing. Let me know in the comments below if any of these cards happen to fit specifically in any of your decks. That is it for today though, and thanks for tuning in.